different veterinary important genera under the family Anoprocephalidae. The important genera includes Monigia, Anoprocephala, Paranoprocephala. So different species under this genera, that is Monigia expansa, Monigia venideni, Anoprocephala parfoliata, Paranoprocephala mammillana, produce different diseases in animals. Therefore, throughout this lecture, I'll talk about morphological features for identification of those species, life cycle, pathogenic significance, clinical manifestation, and finally diagnosis of important parasitic diseases caused by these parasites. So this slide and the next slide was taken from my uh, lecture on introductory classes on c -stored. Just to remind you what we're going to study throughout this semester. So we are starting platyhelminths, that is flatworms. And we're going to study two important classes. The first one is Cystoda, that deals with tapeworms. And the second one is Trematoda, that deals with flukes. So this class further subdivided into two classes. The first one is Eucystoda. This is also known as true tapeworm. And the other one is Cotaloda. And most of the veterinary importance is stored are discussed under two major suborders, that is Cyclophyllidae and the Pseudophyllidae. So under this order Cyclophyllidae, we are going to start a sisters of uh, five different families. The first family is Tainidae family. The second one is Anophocephalidae. Third one is Diphyllidae. Fourth one is Devinidae. Finally, we'll talk about the parasite under Hymenolephtidae. In my earlier lecture, I finished uh, the, my lecture on Tania solium, Tania zygnata, Tania multiceps, Echinococcus granulosus, and Echinococcus multilocularis. So in this lecture, I'll focus on parasites under the family Anoplocephalidae. Some of the important genera includes Monegia, Anoplocephala and Paranoplocephala. So under the family Anoplocephalidae, the important genera includes Monegia, Anoplocephala, Paranoplocephala. Under the genus Monegia, we are going to study Monegia expansa, Monegia venideni. And the final host for this parasite uh, are sheep, goat, cattle, and different other ruminant species. Next, we are going to study Anoplocephala parfoliata, Anoplocephala magna, and Paranoplocephala mammillana. The final host for these parasites um, are different equine species. What about their location? So you are aware that most of the sister species are commonly found in small intestine because they need ready-made food. But in some cases, some of the parasites uh, may even found in different other organs. For an example, Anoprocephala parfoliata, this parasite uh, are most commonly found in small intestine, but they are also found in large intestine. And Anoprocephala magna and Paranoprocephala mammillana, these are commonly found in small intestine, but rarely they even found in stomach of the of this uh, host. The intermediate host of this parasite is olivated mite. This is also known as what is mite. Maybe you are a little bit confused what is mite. So mite is an external parasite and you will come to know more detail about more detail on mite uh, in your third year first semester when you will study another subjects uh, veterinary entomology. But for today's class Remember, just remember, olivated mite, this is an external parasite found in forage, and this mite help in the completion of the life cycle of this parasite. Next, uh, what about the metacystode or infective stages uh, for this parasite? So this is cysticercoid. So we'll talk about uh, two major sisters of the ruminant, 
they are Monigia expansa and Monigia venedini. This parasite, that is Monigia expansa, also known as sheep tapeworm, because this parasite mostly found in sheep, but can also be found in goat, cattle, and different other ruminant species. Monigia venedini, these are mostly uh, found in cattle, but can also be found in other ruminants. These two parasites, commonly known as double pod ruminant tapeworm. So why they are called so? You will come to know the reason in a minute where we will discuss about the morphological features of these two parasites. And these parasites are also considered one of the largest tapeworms of ruminant species. This parasite is responsible for causing one of the important uh, tapeworm infestation in animal, uh, particularly in ruminant, is called monogeosis. Morphological features of the genus Monegia or Monegia species. First, we're gonna talk about the size of this parasite. So this is a very big parasite, ranges four to eight meters in length, and their breadth is also very high around 1.6 to 2.6 centimeter. What about their body parts? So if you can remember uh, the morphology of a cystors, we know that the body's, body of a cystors is divided into three portions. The first one is head and the neck and rest of the portion is called the proglotid. So uh, for most of the cystors, the shape of the scolex is cone shaped and at the top of this cone there may be rostellum or without rostellum but in case of this parasite that is monigia parasite the shape of this collex is almost rounded and there are four prominent sucker there is no rostellum and in the inside the sucker even there is no hooks therefore they are called unarmed uh, so the shape of the mature proglotid, the shape of the mature proglotid is almost rectangular and it is broader than long and you can, uh, if you look closely look at this picture, you can see one set of genital organ located here and another set of genital organ located here. So two sets of genital organ located in each of the mature proglotid. And as there is two set of genital organ, there should be two genital opening. So one is here and another one is here. Therefore, this parasite is also known as double pored uh, tapeworm. What about the serous cord? So serous cord is the part of male genital organs that is located within the serous sac. And this serous cord morphologically different to the serous cord of other cystoid species, and this will possess minute spine on its surface. And the next one is you can see there is a black structure uh, and another structure, flower like structure. So, black structure is called the vitelline gland, and the flower like structure is called the ovary. Due to their uh, seating fashion or due to their th this sort of appearance one may assume that uh, two rings are located or two rings are seats in each of the proglotid and the next important feature is the interproglotidal gland this is present in both monigia expansa and monigia venideni so one can easily differentiate uh, morphologically differentiate which one is which species based on this interproglotidal gland. So in case of the Monigy expansa, this interproglotidal gland, you can see minute doors are here. So interproglotidal gland distributed full breadth of the proglotid. But in case of the Monigy venideni, it is more compact and located in the middle of the proglotid. So this is the summary slides, what I have discussed already. So size of this parasite, this parasite is very big one, four to six meters long, 
and their breadth is also higher. But in case of the Monizia expansa, it is around 1.6 centimeter. And in case of the Monizia venetiani, it is around 2.6 centimeter. And the shape, uh, it is almost rounded or quadrangular. There are four prominent saccar. And if you think about the uh, shape of the proglotid, they're almost rectangular and broader than long. There is presence of two sets of genital organs, including two genital openings located or opens marginally. Therefore, they are also known as double pored tapeworm. So this is very important in your vivagosy. Uh, in it, a uh, teacher may ask you, tell me some of the parasite uh, which have two genital openings. So we have already talked about the interproglotidal gland in case of the monigia. This is extended to the full breadth of the body. And in case of the monigia venideni, it is confined and mostly located in the middle of the proglotid. So it is, it is mostly located here. And there are also presence of numerous testes distributed in the central medullary field. And we have already talked about the serous cord. There is presence of minute spine. So serous cord is here, serous cord is here. And due to the um, ovary and the compact vitelline gland, they assume like a ring on each side of the proglotid. So ring like appearance, it is due to the presence of ovary and the compact vitelline gland. So this is the life cycle of Monigia species. Whenever you start describing any life cycle, you should talk about the type of life cycle, whether it is direct or indirect life cycle. Then talk about the final host and intermediate host involved in the life cycle of that parasite. Don't forget to mention about the infective stages. And finally, talk about the time required for the completion of that parasite. So this is the life cycle of Monigia species. In this case, life cycle is indirect. That is, there is involvement of another host, uh, host that is in, uh, which is known as intermediate host for the completion of this life cycle. And the intermediate host for this parasite is olivated mite or forest mite. And the infective stage for this parasite is the cysticercoid and time required for this for the completion of this uh, life cycle of this parasite is five to six weeks. So the, uh, this parasite uh, located in the small intestine of the final host, in this case it is sheep, goat, cattle or different other ruminants, and the gravid proglotid will be passed through the feces. Whenever the forest mite will intake or ingest the egg of the of this uh, parasite the development, uh, the cysticercoid will be developed within one to four months. And this cysticercoid is the infective stages uh, for the final host. So this final host will be infected after ingesting uh, this forest mite having the cysticercoid in their body cavity. And after ingestion, this cysticercoid will be developed and Ultimately, from this cysticercoid, a mature parasite will be developed, and uh, ultimately, they will start producing gravid proglotid. And I have already mentioned that the time required for the completion of this life cycle is five to six weeks. That is from here. So, from in the grazing in the grazing land, there will be mite on the pasture, and mite will possess cysticercoid in their body and after ingestion ingestion this cysticercoid will be released in the intestine followed by there will be a mature parasite which will start producing gravid proglotid as well as they will start producing different clinical signs here i would like to discuss some of the important epidemiological features that involves in the occurrence of such diseases. So monigiosis or monigia expansa or venideni infection mostly occurred in uh, young animals, that is in lambs, kids, 
calves and the age range is one to eight months. The incidence is higher in summer month. That is, in summer month, the activity of the mite is higher. And the activity of the mite is also higher in the permanent grass or a pasture land which is left uncultivated for a longer period of time. So if an animal grazes on those land, they have the higher chances to be infected with this parasite. And another important uh, interesting features of this parasite, the longevity of the mature parasite in the animal is around uh, six to, uh, two to six months. And after that, they are spont spontaneously eliminated. Pathogenesis or pathogenic significance. In case of the light infection, there is no pathogenic significance. In case of the heavy infection, uh, some pathogenic effect can be found. So how pathogenesis is produced? First of all, you have to think about the location of the parasite. First of all, they are found in the small intestine of the host. So in uh, from the small intestine, they continuously absorb nutrient from the host. As a result, uh, it may lead to malnutrition of the affected host. The next one is when large number of parasites are located in the, in the small intestine, it may occlude or obstruct the intestine. As a result, there may be or it may act as the risk factor for bulbulus or intussusception. What is bulbulus and intussusception? In your pathology classes, uh, you will come to know a lot about this two terminology. And the next thing, when a parasite attaches to the intestinal mucosa, if there is any damage of the intestinal mucosa, it may lead to enteritis followed by ulceration. And if the ulceration doesn't heal, it will ultimately lead to perforation of the intestinal wall, leading to peritonitis and finally death of the animals. So what are the uh, clinical signs involved in this parasitic infection. So in case of the light infection, there is no clinical sign, which is known as asymptomatic infection. And in case of the heavy infection, uh, the major clinical sign involves unthriftiness. So what is unthriftiness? Unthriftiness is you are providing your animal a lot of food, a lot of quality food, but they are unable to put weight. That is called unthriftiness and weakness, diarrhea, intestinal obstruction are uh, the sign in case of the heavy infection. In some cases, digestive disorder, even death, and respiratory sign convulsion are also recorded. So diagnosis of this parasitic infection. Uh, first of all, you have to check the clinical history, particularly the feeding and grazing history, including the epidemiological factors that I have already mentioned and the clinical sign that I have already mentioned. But I, uh, one of the important clinical sign is the appearance of cooked rice appearance proglotid. And by doing the laboratory examination, you can confirm this disease. So uh, you have to go for the gross examination of the feces as well as microscopic examination of the feces, that is coproscopy. And after doing direct smear and flotation techniques, you can easily identify the eggs of the uh, Monegia species. So one of the major char main characteristics of the uh, egg of the Monegia species is the presence of pyriform apparatus. This is very characteristic for, the, for this kind of egg. And uh, what is pyriform, pyriform apparatus? So pyriform apparatus is a pyramidal shaped structure that encircles the embryo for embryo for uh, of this egg. So uh, indicator one uh, is the pyriform apparatus uh, for the egg of Monegia expansa. And, uh, but in true sense or in real life scenario, you cannot see all the time, you cannot see the pyriform apparatus. But by observing the shape of the uh, egg, you can easily identify which one is Monegia expansa, which one is the egg of Monegia expansa, and which one is the egg of Monegia venedini. So for Monegia expansa egg, this is somewhat triangular shape, triangular shape, 
and for the Manuja Venerini, it is somewhat square shaped with the uh, rounded ends. So this is all about uh, Monegia genus as well as Monegia expansion venideni and the disease produced by this parasite. So now we will discuss two more important genera under the family Anoplocephalidae. They are Anoplocephala and Paranoplocephala. The species include Anoplocephala perfoliata, Anoplocephala magda, and Paranoplocephala mamillana. So Paranoplocephala uh, perfoliata, they are also known as leopard cystode due to the presence of one of the special structure just beneath their sucker. And Anoplocephala magna, this is one of the uh, largest parasite of the horse. And the next one is Paranoplocephala mamillana. They are also known as dwarf tapeworm of horse due to their smaller size. And the final host of this parasite is horse and different other equine species. And all this parasite located in the small intestine, but Anoplocephala profoliata, they can also be found in the large intestine. And these two parasites can also, rarely can also be found in the stomach. And you have already know that uh, the intermediate host for this parasite is the olivatid mite and the infective stage on the metacystode is the cysticercoid. So next we are going to focus on morphological features of this parasite, their life cycle, pathogenic significance, clinical sign, and diagnosis of this parasitic infection. So the morphological features of the genus Anoplocephala uh, there are two species, one is Anoplocephala perfoliata, another one is Anoplocephala magna. Uh, the size, uh, Anoplocephala magna is comparatively larger, 80 cm in length, and breadth is also higher, 2.5 cm. And Anoplocephala perf perfoliata, it is 5 to 8 cm in length, and breadth is uh, smaller compared to Anoplocephala magna, 1.2 cm. And the scolex of the Anoplocephala magna is also, uh, uh, the length of the scolex is also higher, four to six millimeter in length. And in case of Anoplocephala perfoliata, it is two to three millimeter in length. But the special structure, lapid, lapid is present in Anoplocephala perfoliata, but it is absent in Anoplocephala magna. So the location of the lapid uh, that is it is just located beneath each of the sucker. And this special structure helps in the identification or differenti differentiation between these two species. And some other common features include these parasites are heavily segmented and segments are wider than long. There are a single set of genital organs and some other features also include numerous testes throughout the medulla over is lobed over is lobed and uh, elongated vital area located posterior to the ovary that is here is the vital area location of the vital area and the genital pore is unilateral so uh, in one of my classes i have talked about what is unilateral okay uh, the eggs uh, similar to the Monegia species, uh, the eggs of the Anoplocephala perfoliata or Anoplocephala magna uh, poses pyriform apparatus. So the morphological features of Paranoplocephala, other species Paranoplocephala mamillana. This is uh, a smaller parasite uh, around 0.6 to 5 centimeter in length. Breadth is also very small, 0.4 to 6 millimeter. Scolex is narrow compared to uh, Anoplocephala species. And you can see opening of the saka is slit-like. So slit-like opening situated, situated dorsally. And similar to other Anoplocephala, the proglottis are wider than the long, wider than long. 
and large number of uh, testes similar to the anaprocephala species and genital pore is irregularly alternative or unilateral vital area dorsal uh, dorsally located and gravid uterus is transversely elongated with numerous outgrowth for the accommodation or to accommodate more eggs and similar to other species or other genus uh, that is anaprocephala genus uh, eggs of paranaprocephala also possess piriform apparatus so this is the life cycle of the uh, anaprocephala or paranaprocephala species uh, the life cycle is exactly similar to monogia species uh, that is the life cycle is indirect the final host is horse donkey and other equine species location uh, in case of the anaprocephala perfoliata it is located in small intestine and large in, uh, large intestine in, in case of the anaprocephala magna or uh, paranaprocephala mammillana these are located in a small intestine of the final host and different olivated mites that is forest mites act as the intermediate host for the completion of the life cycle of this parasite and metacystoid similar that is cysticycloid and uh, it takes around four to six weeks to complete the life cycle of this uh, parasite species so parasite will be located in the uh, that is in their predilection site and from their predilection site the gravid proglotid will be passed out through the feces and whenever uh, the olivated mite intake uh, the eggs of the anaprocephala paranaprocephala species uh, there will be development of cysticircoid uh, which take usually four to two to four months and during grazing on the pasture the final host will be infected with this parasite and uh, that is the cysticircoid will be developed uh, to a mature parasite in their predilection site and i have already mentioned it takes around four to six weeks for the completion of this life cycle pathogenesis or pathogenic significance caused by the anaprocephala or paranaprocephala species so in case of the anaprocephala species in case uh, it is non-pathogenic or there is no pathogenic significance if there is light infection but in case of the heavy infection there is pathogenic effect so the first one is as it is a cystode located in the small intestine or large intestine they will absorb nutrition leading to malnutrition of the host the next one is uh, when large number of parasite present in the predilection site it may obstruct the intestine and this may act as the expector for different pathological conditions like valvulus or intrasusception and the parasite actually uh, with their sucker they attach themselves with the mucosa of the intestine so there is a chance of injury to the mucosa of the intestine and that leads to enteritis and if there is a chronic enteritis which ultimately lead to ulceration of the intestinal mucosa and it may or there is a chance of perforation if there is perforation the consequence is very severe there will be peritonitis and death of the animals so in this picture you can see anaprocephala perfoliata uh, in the intestine of the horse but in case of the paranaprocephala species this is non-pathogenic so clinical sign includes unsriftiness weakness colic and colic can be seen in different other diseases so you have to go for the differential diagnosis and sometimes due to this parasitic infection there is death of the animal if there is uh, peritonitis develops finally diagnosis for the diagnosis clinical history is very important we should go for the feeding and grazing history as well as epidemiological features involves with the occurrence of these diseases clinical sign i have already mentioned and laboratory examination uh, for the identification of the eggs so these eggs also 
causes pyriform apparatus and you can see a pyriform apparatus that encircles the embryo four of the parasite and the shape of the egg is not triangular or um, square shape it is almost um, a rounded shape so these are the reference books that i have used to make this presentation and if you want to know more about this uh, parasite please read the books there is no alternative of reading textbooks thank you so much for listening this presentation